Welcome to the Up and Up podcast, where we give you the resources to help your family and you as an individual out in the Howard County area. Today, I have guests in the studio from David's Legacy Foundation. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what do you do? Uh, my name is Joshua Renner. I am the co-founder, CEO, and chairman of the board of Woo. the Foundation. My name is Robin Renner, and I am the intern for Joshua. Awesome. I am so excited to have you both in the studio. I just met you at a, an event that we were at, yeah, and we had here. kind of some networking and fun yeah. things going on. Thanks for coming to the gala, by the way. Um, so you guys are a 501c3 kind of grassroots organization. Yeah. Tell us, who are you? What do you do? Um, so what we do is we help fund the resources that people can't afford um, due to socioeconomic barriers, whether it's uh, medications, whether it's um, therapy, or whether it's uh, to the severity of a rehab center. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we like to, to um, pay for those resources and help make sure that people that are struggling with mental health have those resources accessible to them because we don't have a lot of them here in Howard County. I think that's excellent because, you know, mental health is expensive. It's not easy and not everybody has the insurance in which covers it. So I'm, I love that you're focused on that. I love that you're focused on medications, insulins and things like that are very expensive. And so uh, I think that's wonderful. And you've got Robin, your intern and daughter Absolutely. in the studio today. And I love that we have somebody young upcoming generation here to take over this organization and so tell me robin why are you doing what you do we actually started the um foundation in honor of my uncle that um lost his battle to his mental health um and he ended his life while working at the san antonio mm. international airport um he was a amazing person and we really just want to fight for equitable access and to life-saving mental health care. You know what? Um, I, I really got to hand it to you, Robin. Uh, that's a challenging subject, and you still got to smile. And so you're a very resilient young person, and I want to thank you for that. And I especially want to thank your dad as well for helping out this organization. And we still have many people that are struggling to find hope in today's situations. So if you're struggling, this is an organization that can help you with resources. And so I think what we need to do is figure out what it is that you can do to help. And then how do they ask for help? How do they get that help? Um, so to how, how we can help y'all is, um, we do have a website, it's called davidslegacyfoundation.com. Um, they they have our emails up there. Um, they have a contact us um, mm -hmm. tab on there. Um, and if you know somebody that is also struggling, um, we have the 988 number um, that most people do not know, or it's a short form of the 1-800 suicide hotline. Yes. Um, which I don't know about you, but I can't memorize a 10 digit number. Like no, that. no. Um, so 988 is probably the best and easiest way to get into contact with someone may not be us, but it is someone that is trained to help whoever is struggling at a um, low point in their life. Insurance doesn't always pay the bill. Nope, um, I know that there's a time that my daughter was seeking counseling and racked up a pretty good bill. Mm -hmm. And um, then they had to stop counseling until the bill was paid. Absolutely. So um, that is a struggle as well. I think about getting treatment too. Treatment is a little pricey. Yes, and so um, sometimes in order to get the treatment that you deserve to kind of overcome suicidal ideations and those kinds of things, it is important to seek out what resources are available. But the biggest issue that I see that David's legacy is doing is bringing hope to a community. Absolutely. Bringing hope to those that may be hopeless, right? 
maybe in difficult situations. If you find yourself there, please reach out to davidslegacy.com. Absolutely. And that way they can get the resources that they need. What else do you want to let the public know about your journey with this 501c3 and how's it coming along? Um, we do have a fundraiser event. It's our annual, it's called Divi David's Christmas Nightmare. Um, it's December 16th. Um, the location is still unknown because uh -huh. the one that we had um, unfortunately fell out on us. Okay. Um, but it is December 16th at 5 p.m. Um, Are is, you looking for a venue to host that nightmare? Um, yeah, uh, we're looking for some place to hopefully donate their time mm -hmm. um, because we are just getting started. Mm. Um, so if there's anyone out there that can donate their time and space, that would be amazing. And uh, they will also have a spot at the uh, party as well. For oh, them. wonderful. I think that's great. And you know, some people will absolutely love that kind of atmosphere. Yes. Um, and it puts a different twist on Christmas, Absolutely. right? Um, and just as you're having haunted mazes and dark nights at the historical society, those are uh, things that are coming up. And when I think about David's legacy, the Christmas nightmare piece, that is going to be interesting for a lot of folks. We have a lot of folks that like um, ghosting and all yes. kinds of good yes. things out there that, you know. So I love that idea. What a neat, different type of fundraiser the, that's available. The idea came from my brother, actually. Uh -huh. um, he loved Tim Burton. Um, uh. The Corpse Bride was probably his favorite movie from Tim Burton. Um, he wasn't too fond about Nightmare Before Christmas, but it was also a Tim Burton movie. So he did like it, but his most absolute favorite is probably The Corpse Bride. That's great. Well, you know, and and listen, that's a humorous yes, movie, yes it is. right? It's, it's a humorous. Tim Burton is humorous. Tim so amazing. Yeah. So uh, sometimes we need different twists on life to give us a little bit of different outlook, and there's nothing wrong with that. So um, there are many ministries on the Up and Up podcast that I could see that might help you. One is the Suicide Coalition. Yes that we've yes. interviewed, and I hope you've met them. Uh, we actually went to their Walk of Hope. That's great. And then the other one that I think of is A1M Ministries, which is kind of a hard rock, screaming band, danger room kind of thing that they have going on. And they're actually looking to host a danger room event. So that may be another thing. Um, and if there's one thing that Sherry's known for, that is making connections with people, Absolutely. as you can see. As I can tell, yeah. And um, we've been able to make several connections for different nonprofits for what they need and um, right now he needs an event hall or a place to kind of host this event so um, you know I'm finding with the up and up podcast that it kind of goes all different ways right it's a collaboration yes. we have a collaboration of we want to help people genuinely yes, with the resources that we have available in Howard County but I also see the up and up show going how can we assist 501c3s with getting their events off the ground or finding the venue or making the right connections to get you involved with the right people to make things happen in our community Absolutely. in the nonprofit world. So I am pretty excited about what you've brought to the table. It really reminds me of a lot of good things that are going on in we're, our we're world today. We're excited to be here in Howard County and to help the people of this Howard County um, because there is not a lot of people that like to talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like some taboo almost um, because um, not only is it homeless people, it's also men. Men's mental health is not talked about enough. No, no. Um, you know, we find us women, we have more words um, <laughs> a day yep. than the average man. Um, and so men's health is important. Absolutely. Not only is their physical health, important but their mental health is important i think isn't it about finding your tribe can be yeah you know when i think about finding your tribe it means finding those around you that can listen and open up and hear your sorrow yeah. your grief or whatever issues might be facing you and your family yep. mm -hmm. the the 
uh, best quote I've ever seen was, surround the people that you want to be. Ooh. Surround the people that you want to be. I like it. I like it. That's deep. Surround yourself with people that you want to be. be. I love that. And I like that. Robin, tell me how you, as a young person, surround yourself with the people that you want to be. I usually, like, when I started, when I was at public, public school, there were, honestly, there were a lot of bullies. So I would literally just push them out my way. And I would stick with my friends that actually trusted me, and they were with me through everything until I became homeschooled because the bullying got to me too much. Okay. And now that you're homeschooled, how do you socialize out there and get friends that can champion you on? Um, We actually do a lot of things. Um, Sometimes we would go to parks and stuff like that, and we would create friends. And my mom would get their phone, their parents' phone numbers and stuff like that. And I have a couple of friends out there. I have, there's one next to my old house that we're still friends. Um, so I have a lot of friends. It's just I don't talk too much because I'm homeschooled and I have a lot to do at home. And I agree with that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You've got a priority, right? And education is your work. And I love that because that's what we talk about at the outreach with Kokomo Urban is your work is your school. And then they go out to work one night a week and they get their life skills, which you're getting. Um, And so I appreciate the fact that you have socialization in that homeschooling aspect. I think that is so valued. So, Robin, thank you, because that was kind of an off-the-cuff question, and I want to say you did really super well with that. No, I'm impressed. She might be able to take over this show someday. <laughs> hey, she, she might. Woo! That's hey, what I'm looking it's, at. It's I'm, about, I'm replacing myself. It's all about training the younger people, because they are our future. That's right. And I believe that. Young people are our future, and that's why we're investing with them with this podcast. Because to me, that's who we need to shine the light on. And let's hear what their thoughts are, because they are the next future generation leaders, aren't they? Absolutely. And yeah. and there's a, a, a new bill coming out, um, hopefully soon, but it helps uh, younger kids in school with their mental health and have a mental health program inside the school as parents see their child struggling uh, it is important to find people that can mentor and get those people where they need to be and their children where they need to be so i love that fact um, that you're bringing that up Um, i appreciate what you're bringing to the table I hope people will go to First Friday, which is, you know, always a good time. Uh, First Fridays, first of the month, downtown, on the square. You can go. There is a lot of nonprofits that are out there that are willing to help. So whether it's this month's uh, First Friday or next month's First Friday, put it on your calendar. Come downtown. Enjoy what's going on in your community. I want to thank you for joining the Up and Up podcast. Podcast, Joshua and Robin. Um, I appreciate what you're bringing to the table. And I appreciate the fact that you are viewing us today. Hopefully, these resources that we're sharing with you, you're able to get the help out there to those that are needing it in our community. And we thank you very much. Have a great week. The episode is funded by the Community Foundation of Howard County. Special thanks to the Hunt Family Fund, which was used to fund this grant. And now, back to the Up and Up podcast. Welcome back to the Up and Up podcast, where we interview one of our Up crew. Today, we have... Zaire Lewis. Zaire is in the studio. Woohoo! Hey, tell me... Why did you come to the UP program? Because I want to make new friends and have a great day. What things do you buy with your points? Donuts. Lots of donuts. (laughs) Now, would that be the powdered kind or the chocolate cupboard? All of them. I need (laughs) all. (laughs) He loves all donuts. Okay, Dan's here we come, right? 
All right. Hey, are you going to be a donut maker or what are you going to be when you grow up? I'm going to be a YouTuber. A what? YouTuber? Yes. Oh my goodness. Are you already cutting YouTube video? Not yet. Content? Not yet. Okay. Well, they start young these days. So how many years have you been in the UP program? Five years. Wow. So you started at what age? Nine. Because I cheat the program. (laughs) It was an accident. I didn't know I was. Oh, you were nine and you went in the UP and you're supposed to be 10? Yes. But you got away with it. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sneaky. You are sneaky. So I've been wanting to be like a ninja for so long. But okay. So are you a ninja in the yard area? Yeah. Like when you go out to work? Like I know how to like chop like like logs, like the thick like thick logs. Mm-hmm. With my bare hand is kind of hard, but it's fun. Okay. So you like to stack wood. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we do in the yards? I mean, w- tell the people, why would they want to call us so we could go out there to do a job for them? I pull weeds mm-hmm. and I help some of the people. That's neat. You know, there's such a thing as being a crew leader on the job, right? Mm-hmm. So what does a crew leader expected to do? If you're chosen to be the crew leader, what do you got to do when you get to that homeowner's house? Knock on the door, be helpful. And then when you're done talking to her, go to the bus and then get your crew and then to the work. Okay. And so you've got to come back and let them know what does that homeowner need done? Mm -hmm. Are you in charge of that house getting finished? Yes. Okay. And what happens if you don't? Uh, bad things. Like? Um, getting fired, getting like in trouble. And in trouble when once. Kareen or Curtis would fire you, uh, is it forever or is it just that day? It's just one day. So what happens in that case? So you just wait on the bus and when you get, when it's time to go, you just go. Uh, do you get your rewards of your points? No. Oh, okay. Do you get to go to the store? No. Oh, yeah. That's kind of, oh, nobody wants to be fired, do they? They do not want to be fired. Yeah. It only takes one time, right? And then no. you're like, woo, I'm going to work. Yeah, I get you. I wouldn't want to sit in a hot, stinky van. Yep. Yeah, no? All right. So what's your favorite thing in the store? The, sh- already- the shoes, the donuts. <laughs> So, what is one life lesson that you're going to take on into your work career with you that you've learned at Kokomo Urban Outreach? Playing music, making YouTube videos, and doing other kind of cool stuff. All right. So, you've got some friends. I like to make music on my iPad. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? You said a YouTuber, but what kind of content are you going to do for YouTube? Make music, quality chop things, and like make gaming videos. You know, there used to be a comedian that did karate chopping of fruit. I know this um, YouTuber, he likes to use like ninja swords mm-hmm. and he like chops things with it. That's cool. Are you going to go on to go to college then, or are you going to get a certification, or what's your thoughts? I'm going to college. Ooh. I do you know where? Um, I'd have no. No idea. I don't okay. Play music. All right. So you're kind of investigating the college scene. Yes. Yeah. What grade are you in right now? Six. Six. It's okay. very hard. You don't want to see my work. I have a stack. Okay. Uh, what happens if you get behind in school and you need a little help? Is there something there at the outreach that you can ask and request? Yes. You can ask the up grown up of people or whatever but you can ask them if and they will hopefully help you mm-hmm. we have tutors don't we like jace yes yeah jace. that would help you everyone's helpful there that's awesome is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience before we go today yes so i have this friend up he is a very good person but sometimes she can like get very sad and, like, when people get started up, people just helps you. Like, the grown-ups there just comes and says what's wrong and, like, helps you. Do we kind of act like a family? Yes. 
I think so, too. It's like you and I, brothers and sisters, yes. working together to get the job done. Right? Mm -hmm. This is my buddy, and this is the Up and Up podcast, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>